Hello, I am Dr. Azal from MedicoVisual.com back with hopefully the last part of insulin resistance lecture series. Well, not so early because in the next part we will discuss the beta cell failure or beta cell dysfunction and how it leads to diabetes mellitus type 2. So basically my aim is to teach you the pathogenesis of type 2 diabetes mellitus at the basic level uh, by telling you the molecular details of the mechanism and the things which we know at this time what we know about the pathogenesis of type 2 diabetes mellitus because the problem is that many things are not yet clear about the pathogenesis of type 2 diabetes mellitus so uh, let's now talk about insulin resistance first and uh, this would be the fourth part of our lecture series so let's say that here we have a cell and uh, as we have discussed previously that here is the glucose and it will enter into the cell through the glucose transporters. So there are several different types of several different isoforms of uh, glucose transporters. So let's suppose that it, it could be any cell, liver cell or peripheral cell. So uh, the glucose, if it is liver cell, the glucose is entering through GLUT2. But if it is peripheral cell, specifically if we talk about skeletal muscle cell or cardiac muscle cell even and uh, if we talk about let's say the uh, adipose tissue then it would be GLUT4. Of course there are there is GLUT1 as well that is in inside the central nervous system but let's not go into details of glucose transporters. So glucose enters inside the cell and then it is utilized to get energy and this process is called glycolysis and pyruvate is created as a result of this glycolysis process. Then uh, if more glucose is coming it will be converted into glycogen and then this pyruvate it can enter into the mitochondrial matrix and it, uh, it can undergo the process of TCA cycle by combining with oxaloacetate and forming citrate and so on and again if more and more glucose is coming this glucose will be ultimately converted into free fatty acid that will be converted into triglyceride these triglycerides they will be packed as VLDL and they will be released outside the cell if it was a hepatocyte a liver cell but let's say if it was not a liver cell let's say it was a muscle cells then these triglycerides they will not be released outside as VLDL but these triglycerides will be stored within the cell as the intracellular, intramyocellular uh, triglyceride stores or fat stores for use as an energy later when required. So these things you already know and the point here is that all these processes they are stimulated by this fatty bird, this well-fed bird, this well-fed hormone called insulin. So all these processes, whether it is this glycogenesis, glycolysis, this, uh, what is this, fatty acid synthesis, and some other processes as well, all these processes are s stimulated by insulin. But remember, this insulin is not sitting inside the cell. It is basically outside the cell, but it is just for the demonstration purposes. So insulin is here stimulating all these processes but remember insulin is not the only player in uh, the glucose regulation there are certain other hormones certain other factors as well that play a role in glucose regulation and insulin practically it is uh, almost the only fed state hormone of course there are others as well but they usually do not directly affect the metabolism the other which are against which are working against the insulin these are these hormones these thin lean type of hormones <laughs> why i have represented them as thin lean birds because 
these are released in the fasting state when your body is starving and when your body says that please stop these processes we need to save glucose we cannot utilize glucose we cannot utilize glucose we, we, we cannot store the glucose we cannot uh, convert the glucose into fats we need the glucose for brain otherwise uh, the coma may ensue and other problems even death may occur due to severe hypoglycemia convulsions may occur so these words are released these are not words these hormones are released which inhibit these processes all these processes uh, remember that I have just uh, focused here but actually truly speaking this process will also be stimulated by this okay uh, sorry inhibited by this and this process will also be inhibited by this opposite to that the insulin it will stimulate all these uh, processes so that is important to understand no because no here you just understand this thing because these uh, hormones these which are working against the insulin since they are working against the insulin they are called counter regulatory hormones so they are counter regulatory they are working against the insulin so let's focus here there is actually a balance between them so if we have insulin here uh, then opposite to that there will be counter regulatory hormones to balance this why because if there is too much insulin if there is there is too much insulin inside our blood the glucose level will become critically low to maintain the glucose level uh, in the normal range in the normal physiological range that is about 70 mg per dl to uh, 100 mg per dl or who also consider 110 mg up to 110 mg per dl is normal so to maintain this uh, this normal range of glucose counter regulatory hormones are also there and they their aim is to prevent the hypoglycemia because if insulin is there only then hypoglycemia may ensue because insulin is forcing the body forcing the cell to uptake and utilize the glucose so much so that glucose will become less in our blood and this glucose will become less for brain and then brain that may ultimately ensue so that's why we have counter regulatory hormones uh, what are the names of these counter, uh, counter regulatory hormones some of the important ones are glucagon the cortisol catecholamines and even the growth hormones now you see what if one of the hormone it pick one of these counter regulatory hormones so it is insulin these are counter regulatory hormones what happens if one of the counter regulatory hormone it becomes abnormally high so let's say this counter regulatory hormones it hormone it becomes abnormally high naturally uh, this will counter the effect of insulin so much so that it will start because it, it has started resisting the actions of insulin insulin resistance will start and the glucose level in the blood will become low or high it will become high because these are countering the these are resisting the effects of insulin let me tell you how so here we have insulin now because insulin is stimulating this process uh, it, it is stimulating the machinery biological machinery involved in these processes on the other hand these counter regulatory hormones they are inhibiting the enzymatic machinery now if there is too much counter regulatory hormone let's say one of the hormone becomes too much high more of these these enzymatic machinery more of them will be inhibited and less of them will be stimulated because stimulate stim stimulatory hormone that is insulin is less as compared to this inhibitory hormone so because of this the there will be resistance to actions of insulin and there will be hyperglycemia and ultimately there will be diabetes one of the classical example of this is Cushing syndrome Cushing syndrome in Cushing syndrome there is cortisol excess cortisol is a stress hormone so if there is too much stress hormone 
there is too much stress hormone inside the blood the stress hormone will say to the cell please don't use glucose we need glucose in this stressful situation we need to save these candies please don't use it so in that case in the cortisol excess glucose level will be high even though insulin is trying to make the cell utilize uh, ut uptake and utilize the glucose but still the its action will be resisted by these counter regulatory hormones another example if you want to know uh, glucagon excess that may be due to glucagonoma glucagonoma is the a tumor of glucagon secreting alpha cells in the in the islet of pancreas so any of the any of these uh, any of these counter regulatory hormone even growth hormone let's say in acromegaly or um, what is this catecholamine excess all these things any of any of the hormone if it is in excess it leads to insulin resistance which ultimately leads to hyperglycemia leading to diabetes diabetes mellitus so that's how counter regulatory hormone raising leads to hyperglycemia so let's move forward now here is the beta cell now beta cell it is happily secreting the insulin and that is in a normal person now what happens if there is insulin resistance if there is insulin resistance okay let me show you so if there is insulin resistance uh, it is secreting the insulin but the problem here is that the blood glucose level is still very high so glucose is still very high so what glucose will do this raised glucose it will try to stimulate the it will not try it will actually stimulate this beta cell it will stimulate beta cell to secrete more and more more and more insulin even if it it was secreting insulin but glucose level is still high so it will start secreting more insulin and it will start secreting more insulin very quickly and hurriedly in order to compensate the insulin resistance so let me show you so here uh, if the rate was like this it was very calmly sitting and spitting out the insulin then if there is insulin resistance it will become sad and exhausted and it will secrete lots and lots of insulin in very less time so beta cell will overwork beta cells will overwork to compensate for insulin resistance and fortunately initially especially they actually become successful in compensating for the insulin resistance and initially diabet initially in insulin resistance even if there is insulin resistance the diabetes mellitus may not start because beta cells have raised the insulin level so initially in type 2 diabetes mellitus the insulin level it may be higher than normal now let's move forward so here is a cell and it has to bind with its insulin receptor and it leads to activation of receptor and uh, phosphorylation of receptor which will lead to generation of response now if this insulin it keeps on bound with this uh, with this receptor this response will indefinitely continue this this response will never terminate of course we do not want that we want this response to be terminated so how it happens through the help of certain proteins which are not clearly known uh, after binding of this insulin to its receptor after some time this receptor it is internalized well by sometimes i mean within microseconds not uh, within hours or days so within the microseconds of binding of this insulin to its receptor and generation of response this receptor is then internalized with the help of certain proteins now as this receptor it internalized two things may happen with it uh, it may either recycled back to the cell surface or it may fuse with a very dangerous and lethal type of organelle and that is called lysosome so if it fuses with lysosome it it fuses its membrane with lysosome lysosomes have special cutters special enzymes to destroy the proteins of this receptor so it will destroy the protein it will destroy the receptor as well as insulin 
and uh, this effect will be not just terminated but the receptor will also be destroyed right so that is actually the normal phenomena that's how uh, especially in liver that's how the insulin undergoes the process of uh, destruction or denaturation and uh, process of catabolism now the thing is that here is the insulin it is binding with its receptor and it will ultimately lead to its internalization and destruction now imagine that if there are lots of insulin released for example in case of insulin resistance too much insulin is released and this insulin it will be binding to more and more of its receptors initially very few receptors are bound by insulin and rest of the receptors are lying there and they are spare but if insulin level is very high not very high even if it is slightly high it will occupy more receptors and the result will be that more of these receptors will be destroyed so will there be if the receptor per unit area is reduced as a result of increased receptor destruction will there be any benefit of more insulin that is coming the answer is no so this this could be another mechanism of insulin resistance because there is decreased number of insulin receptors so what we can say is that if there is increased insulin level it lead to more receptor occupation and then as a result of more receptor occupation more receptors are internalized and destroyed by that lethal kind of organelle called lysosome and there will be decreased surface receptors now if more insulin is coming there will be less receptors to occupy for this insulin so this insulin won't be able to do much favor to us so that is again another mechanism probably another mechanism of insulin resistance its role in insulin resistance is still controversial by the way so what will be the reaction of pancreas on this so pancreas has uh, put too much effort to increase the secretion of insulin to compensate for the insulin resistance but cells do funny thing they internalize and degrade the insulin receptors along with insulin and pancreas be like um, <laughs> like this face it is very disappointed at what what these cells has done with its beloved insulin and its receptors so pancreas won't be able to do much favor to us and to these cells so that was about the insulin resistance in next lecture we will talk about beta cell exhaustion that how due to increased uh, synthesis how after synthesizing more and more insulin ultimately the beta cells they burn out they get exhausted and even the beta cell apoptosis may start and the beta cell number it may reduced just like in type 1 diabetes mellitus but type 2 diabetes mellitus in type 2 diabetes mellitus the death of beta cell it is not immune mediated generally speaking it is due to beta cell exhaustion and we will discuss those details in the next lecture thank you so much for watching this video